um, and a real pleasure to be back at the podium, really to try and now bring home the take-home messages. So I'm going to ask who in the audience here comes from the West Central African region. So you are the people that we are hosted by us, and, and who are you? If you just put up your hand so we know who in the audience you are. Well, I think you've already heard that DSD is here. Um, and congratulations to this extraordinary lineup of testimonies that DSD is here. But we are hoping that by the end of this session, you would have had a real encouragement um, to go home and introduce DSD in your clinics at home if you haven't done so already. We know that our patients, our clients, love differentiated service delivery. We owe it to them to bring dis differentiated service delivery to them. And it has been the pleasure of the IAS and their partners over a number of years now to really make sure, because we are about uh, the care of people living with HIV around the world, it has been our pleasure to really try and introduce. We try to be as pragmatic as we can be. Um, and so that's what this afternoon is about. Now, if you are here from other regions, including, I might say, North America or Europe, and you have not yet done this, I'm speaking to you as well. So this is for all of us here. Um, and, and I think it's very interesting and, and, and important to note that context does matter. We're here in West Central Africa, um, and things are different here. If you didn't get that, there are complex political situations here. Health systems and supply chain often is problematic. And we also deal with a relatively low prevalence or concentrated epidemic type situation. So we have to think a little bit differently. Um, and so what we're gonna try and present to you here are five pragmatic steps that you can take today when you get back to your clinic. I think you've heard a beautiful example of how this can be done in various um, settings and the Ghanaian example of how you can actually move and show results quickly. The first is um, that of the clinically stable patient. We do absolutely endorse that DSD should start there. It makes sense to start with this population. Yesterday, the day before, we've spoken a lot about normalizing the lives of our patients so that they can get on with their lives. Um, and this is exactly what DSD does, is if you can hone in on your stable patients, you've heard a number of um, eligibility examples uh, this afternoon, you can quickly move those people into a differentiated service delivery model. We've seen it in Eastern and Southern Africa to have a really quick scale up, um, and it works for both and I might add, for the client, but also for the healthcare worker. So this is also about making the lives of healthcare workers uh, better. Now, this has been endorsed, you may not know this, in policy in Cote d'Ivoire, DRC, Ghana, Guinea, and Sierra Leone, and it's in final discussions in Central African Republic and Nigeria. So it is well on the move. Um, and so get with it and get to your stable patients as soon as possible. Secondly, and crucially, is that differentiated service delivery is client-centered. It's not to save costs, it's not to make things easier. Those will happen, by the way, but first and foremost, it is about the client and client-centered. We need to engage, therefore, people living with HIV, both in the design of our clinics and in the delivery of the services. So a shout out for people living with HIV. We have to bring them in and make sure that they concur with what we want to do. Uh, here you see a group of people living with um, HIV in the Democratic Republic of Congo who received their artery fills within community distribution points or PODIs, as Didier had uh, shared earlier, stating that by taking their artery fills within the community, they are responsible for their own care. Self-management, self-ownership, accountability, and this is a very important component of differentiated art delivery. The third, third take-home message is to extend art refills. Such a simple thing, 
so hard to get our policymakers to agree to. But this is an obvious win and something we need to do very quickly. So acknowledging supply chain challenges, it is critical that longer refills be offered to support sustained adherence. The example outlined on this slide is from published data in Guinea, where during the Ebola outbreak, as you heard if you were French speaking, in 2016, art refills were extended to up to six months and 90% of those on longer refills were retained after 18 months. So this is not harmful, it is beneficial. So very important to think about extended art refills for those who are adherent um, and it de definitely benefits the health system. Given the generally lower HIV prevalence and higher levels of HIV stigma in the region, longer art refills can enable a reduction in transport costs for clients, minimize the risk of breaches of confidentiality or accidental disclosure. It also reduces the necessity of ensuring that frequent art refills are available at every health facility. So supply chain is absolutely key. The the next uh, very important take home is to reduce the number of required visits to a clinician. I'm a clinician, I love clinicians, but I promise you, you do not need to see every patient every time. In fact, in many cases, it's better if you don't. You as a clinician need to spend your time worrying about initiated patients, sick patients, patients you really need um, tr trained care. Let the stable, healthy, well patient be seen by somebody else. Um, and this is often preferred by our clients as well. They re receive their art refill then quickly. Uh, clinicians, as I say, can focus their attention elsewhere. Um, and you should think about the building blocks. I hope you've got it now. Who, what, where, and when should be different uh, for clinical consultations compared to art refills. So think about that in your own facility. And finally, the last building block, and this is probably the most important, is in, in, engagement of key populations, peers, and people living with HIV, lay providers. Bring those folk into your clinics and into your clinical care. It will make the absolute, you know, difference to, to the kind of peer support we can produce uh, for our patients. It reduces stigma, it enables task sharing, and by the way, gives people a purpose for their own lives. So absolutely worthwhile to do. In many Western Central African settings, high levels of stigma continue to exist. Um, and this is one way that we can really break that and make some inroads. So involving peers in our care is so important. So I'm hoping that you have heard these five absolutely key messages, something each of you can work on as you go home. Uh, we have been actively, the IAS and the partners, and here I want to give a shout out to the team there, and you see them in the booth. Anna and her team have worked tirelessly in the last two to three years on this journey to bring DSD to Africa and, and throughout the world. They have particularly worked now for the Western Central African region. So if you have not yet picked up your quick cheat sheet, just a two-page document, you can pick it up at the IAS, but we have also spent much more time in French and English creating a much longer document which lays it out for you step by step. So please pick up your copy at the IAS booth um, before you leave uh, and make sure that you go home. Uh, with a copy and begin to implement DSD. And with that, I'll hand back to Dr. Salah.